Well, hi everybody, it's Donna Parto, and I want to welcome you to today's session on winning at love. I was talking with a friend of mine who is very happily married, and she's like, you know, I think 95% of my happiness and success is being happily married. And I think it's something that a lot of people uh, do aspire to. I mean, more and more people are choosing to be single, but most people really deep in their heart of hearts, if they're honest, would love to would love to win at love. And so I'm really honored to be here today with the author of the brand new book. It's an Amazon number one bestseller, Winning at Love, Kim Champion. Hey, Kim, I'll, I'll give you a proper introduction. Just say hi. Hi. Welcome. Okay. Um, as I mentioned, Kim is an Amazon bestselling author of Winning at Love. She is an expert on communication and conflict resolution. She has been a relationship coach for 25 years mentoring women, and in particular, helping women uh, who are professional, uh, who are career-oriented, and maybe they woke up one day and was like, wow, I've succeeded at everything except this, right? And so that's really her heart, um, any Christian woman, but in particular, those women who've really pursued their, um, their calling, their destiny, and realized, well, wait a minute. I, I've won a lot of things, but I want to win at love. Her mission is to help Christian women develop stronger, more positive relationships. She's also the founder of a nonprofit organization. Well, she's a Christian, so everything's in ministry, but it's a nonprofit organization. She has a bachelor's degree in phys ed, which means that she brings a holistic strategy to love, helping women get stronger and more confident in spirit, soul, and body. I think there's a lot of truth to that, Kim. When you feel better, you look better, you like get going out there, you're ready. Well, welcome. We're so honored to have you today. Thank you, Donna. Thanks for having me. And yeah. I just want to say thank you for your support in helping me navigate this book process. I want to thank everybody that joined in today. God bless you. Bless you and bless you. More blessings. So, Kim, you've been doing this for 25 years. You've been helping women with their relationships. What is like the number one frustration that women have when it comes to their their love relationships with men? I would say the uh, top frustration uh, are men who have accepted traditional gender roles uh, and beliefs as their standard for their relationships, uh, meaning that they're imposing gender expectations on women in turn places limitations. And this right here is impacting, negatively impacting the progression uh, of women in terms of uh, moving forward and building stronger relationships with men. Yeah, so you're not talking to the woman who wants to be a traditional homemaker. You know, that Absolutely. woman, is, she she probably get a line up of men. <laughs> you're exactly. really talking to the woman who is professional, who is successful, um, maybe makes a, a good deal of money. and maybe it's harder for her to find a man who's comfortable and confident with that, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, okay. I think what tends to happen with traditional uh, gender roles and beliefs is that uh, men, again, traditionally, uh, you know, men have assumed the role as the breadwinner uh, and expect, have expectations for women to be the home providers, the caregivers, but you have women that have been brought up in two income households who have been taught, you know, you need to contribute to your relationship. You need to contribute to your marriages. And there are women with, uh, you know, with visions, dreams, aspirations, they want more, you know, and it's just, it can just be frustrating to have these uh, beliefs imposed on them. Whereas, uh, you know, they're trying to move forward with the man in the relationship, you know, they're so trying to move together. So it's a mismatch. You have a man who, and there's nothing wrong with that, who wants a traditional wife in a traditional role where, you know, he's the breadwinner. She stays home with, you know, the, the children and takes care of the household. And there's a lot of men, more and more men are saying, yeah, that's what I want. That's okay. You're not the wife for them. And that's why I think it's important. And you talk about this. If you are a woman and you have a calling and you, you know, you want to be, you want to pursue that calling, pursue that destiny, but you still want love. 
where does that leave you? And I, I love that you're talking about this really openly. Actually, one of the leading predictors of divorce, and I, I, I know you are aware of this, is if the woman makes more money than a man. That's one of the leading predictors of a divorce. So I think, I think what you're talking about, and I want to hear more from you, is this idea of a mismatch. So there's a lot of books on dating and relationship. What, what's missing and what's, what's different? Okay, I would say uh, what's not being addressed is uh, women prioritizing self-care. I believe that they're not implementing Christian principles in their relationships. I believe that they're not talking about abusive behaviors or past traumas. I believe a lot of women go in, they're excited about finally finding someone that they can share their life with, but they're not asking those questions as if, you know, well, talk to me, what are your beliefs about women? You know, what past traumas have you experienced with women that would have some type of negative impact on me or the relationship? You know, what are your dreams and your aspirations? Do you have a problem with me pursuing mine? You know, so I think it's all about sitting down and having that, you know, that sometimes hard conversation about uh, where both parties lies, but there must be a continual uh, uh, partner equality in all relationships, whether a woman decides to stay at home and she wants to be kept and, and take care of the, the kids, that has to be communicated. And what happens years later where the kids are grown and she now wants to pursue a career, will there be an issue? So again, uh, I believe that women should seek, again, men that believe and have accepted positive gender roles in their lives as opposed to the traditional roles and talk about it you know there's ways of navigating it you know uh, a lot of traditional roles have been passed down intergenerationally you know it's just you know men have accepted that belief for their lives and they you know they want to move forward with that you know the issues that i have is basically with uh traditional gender roles are those that emphasize negative masculine traits as in dominance, aggression, control. I have issues with that. And I think that what tends to happen is that, again, women become involved with men. Uh, they see these signs, they avoid the signs, and then it's a vicious cycle, it worsens. So I believe that women should have that initial conversation. They should communicate with men in terms of what they expect in the relationship. You know, have that, again, that hard conversation. And that way, both parties are on the same page. So it's no misinterpretations, no misunderstandings uh, moving forward. Yeah, it's that, it's that mismatch of expectations. You have the man who's thinking, I, I guess the joke is women marry a man thinking she can change him and she can't. And men marry a woman thinking she won't change and she does, you know. But Absolutely. It's these... that expectation, right? It's that expectation. And what tends to happen is that that expectation, it places strain on the relationship. So you're unable to move forward and build a stronger relationship. Uh, and this, you can't build intimacy. You can't build that deeper bond because there's still that expectation. But I think that if you get ahead of it and you communicate it uh, prior to developing a relationship, this should be communicated while you're dating. You know? Okay. I read it. I read it. I saw a video the other day and because um, I'm very interested. We talked about this a lot. I'm really interested in the men's movement right now. And this man sent a text. It's actually a famous man. I won't say who to this woman he was dating and said, you know, this, these are kind of my boundaries. This is what I'm looking for. And if it's not for you, I wish you all the best. But we're not a mat. I'm 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 summarizing it but and it's gone really viral people are like how you know you can't say that you have to say that Kim why don't people want to be honest and just say these are my expectations in this relationship is this are you cool with this why is it no. so hard because people they fear being alone you know some yeah, people have it. timers that's Donna, it. some people have timers on their life that's it you know uh and they have other people's expectations that have been placed on them. Like they have parental expectations. No, you know, by this age, you should have kids. I want some grandkids. So they have outside pressures that's being placed on them. So they're on a timer. They're trying to listen. We want to listen. We need to get together. You know, we need to formulate this. We're going to get married. What are we going to do? We're going to have kids. We need to plan this right away. So uh, sometimes women, they just miss it. 
they're so excited about being involved with the man. And that's a positive thing. That's a great thing. But if anything that you're doing in a relationship is contrary to God's word, if it's anything that goes against your beliefs, uh, you know, then you have to say, okay, you know what, this man is not for me, you know, God will provide. And I think that's what happens is that we don't look to God to provide. We look at, you know, immediate situations, a quick fix, this is going to happen. And there's no plan B, there's no alternatives. You know, you have to have alternatives. You know, nothing is promised to us. You know, nothing is promised to us. If God has given us an opportunity to live on this earth and cultivate uh, relationships, that's a blessing and a half. But, you know, I write about it in, 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 in books and I, you know, and I talk to people about God loans us people. They're never ours to keep. So while they're here, you appreciate them. Whereas in relationships, again, you know, it depends on the man that, you know, the woman's with. He may agree or, or may disagree. You know, he has his own set of beliefs and that's why it's important to get in front of it, sit down and communicate those things. And that way, you know where you are. I mean, you can become just great friends. It's nothing wrong with, you know, building great friendships. Yeah, I think it is. Is it that sense of the scarcity mindset? that desperation yeah, there is a shortage of men i think that goes into a play too yeah. thank you for that yeah there's the scarcity unfortunately a lot of our men are incarcerated incarcerated a lot of men are incarcerated a lot of men are married so there is a scarcity of men you know a lot of men are broken you have that percentage of men that don't want to date women because they've been traumatized as well uh so i believe that with scarcity of course you know, the man becomes is, becomes really high. And I think that women believe that they have to settle. They have to find a man and settle. Despite if he mistreats her, they have to settle because what's the probability of having to wait another five, 10 years to start developing a relationship? Then we need to come from the place of believing that God is who he says he is and that he'll do what he said he will do. Absolutely. It's going back to prioritizing God, knowing that God created you for a purpose. God would not put you here without giving you a companion. I mean, he did so with Adam. So what would make you any different? He loves you, you know, so absolutely. Yeah, God, God is the one who said it's not good for, for men to be alone. Yeah. And even with um, the, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent. Even with, there was a tribe of, of, of elephants, there had been a lot of, you know, poaching and stuff. And it ended up just a, have you heard the story? Just a large group of males who grew yes. up together and they were mess. They were just a complete and utter mess because there were no fem females, <laughs> you know, right. to, to balance and no mature men. It was a group of young uh, you know, and and I think I think that it's kind of a picture of some things that are happening in our culture. You've got all these young men together. They don't, you know, they're not in a committed relationship. They don't really have that feminine input to balance them. They don't have good role models. And you know, the women are like walk into that crazy herd, and you're like, this thing's crazy, <laughs> right? No, absolutely. And I encourage parents in the book, in the book, winning that love. I encourage parents to allow men to vocalize how they feel they should no young male should be suppressing how he feels because that leads to you know uh, other stressors in mm -hmm. which uh you know you have men and it actually happens imposing their pain their traumas their doubts their fears on women that's that's the start of abuse so it's it's best it's best that parents allow young males to again communicate their feelings and what they're going through and again you know, teach them to go to God, teach them to give those things to God in prayer, you know, uh, as another means of, you know, just an outlet. This might be a tangent or it might make sense. Well, we'll, we'll find out what I'm just making. I'm just kind of coming to me. Uh, I don't remember who I heard talking about this, but it, somebody was having a conversation about how it used to be that people would celebrate and sanctify their singleness they would sanctify their singleness and i think that if we if we did that and said i'm in a season of singleness and i'm going to sanctify that to god and embrace it then you would have a clearer sense of when that season is ending 
and God is calling you now to, okay, now is the season to be married. Do you think it could be the muddle between those two that it's in that season when we should be single and embracing that and serving God and, you know, becoming who God would have us be. We're, we're doing all this dating and all this other stuff. And then when we're ready to marry, we, we get a lot of baggage. I mean, could that be part of it? That definitely could be part of it, Donna. You know, I believe that uh, once you're, you, you know, a, a relationship terminates for you. So say you're in a relationship and it ends. I think that there should be a process where it's reflection. Yes. You need to reflect in that way. You know, you're not quick to dive into the same situation. And again, a, a spiral of similar, you know, situations or circumstances occur again. Oh, so I huge. believe that there should be a period of reflection. Oh, you know, that's so huge. Time with that's God. so huge. Absolutely. Women run from relationship. And, and I think women more than men, but I don't have the stats on that. But, yes. you know, to run from relationship to relationship to relationship and never taking that time. So do you have like tools or a process for women who are coming out of a relationship to do that, to reflect and evaluate? Absolutely. I mean, I encourage, and, and that's, again, I encourage people, I encourage women to self prioritize. You have to take care of self. You know, uh, as women, you know, we we're carriers. We're born carriers. We you know we birth babies. So uh, you know we carry. We have the gift to carry life. And I think what tends to happen is that you know we carry a baggage. And I and I use this as a, a reference in the book is that we carry baggage from one relationship to the next. You know, listen, you were just in a relationship with X, Y, Z, you know, it's no need to carry that to the next stop, you know, leave that there. Because what happens is that, you know, it comes off to the male that you're trying to change them into what you were used to in your past relationship. And that's unfair. So I strongly believe that I believe that there should be reflection. And that's something that I do encourage women to do. Uh, and that's in the book as a strategy, as part of healing. You know, it's part of renewing yourself, preparing yourself for the next journey with the next man who may result in being your husband. So absolutely. And that idea I, of the spirit, the, the spirit, soul, body, bringing in your, your background and your, your passion for health. That's really good. I like that. Um, who, who is going to most benefit? Uh, by the way, I'm here today with Kim Champion. She's the author of Winning at Love. You get hold it up. You get, do you have it? Hold up. Okay. It's beautiful, winning at love, and uh, she's our special guest today, and all this week, she's giving away a free copy of the Kindle edition of her book, and you can learn more at her website, winningatlove.online. Is that right? Winningatlove.online. Online, correct, Donna. Okay, so if you go to winningatlove.online, if you're watching this live or pretty soon after it, you can get the free Kindle download, and after this promotion, of course, it's still going to be like very affordable. And you can also get the beautiful paperback as well. And Kim, I know that you have a event coming up uh, as well. Maybe just share a little bit about that before we uh, continue with the rest of the interview. Yes. Uh, as a gift and a thank you for everybody that uh, has supported uh, this project, has supported this process, this healing process uh, for women, for men, uh, and who support relationships uh we're doing a master in a, a master class uh, in a, on arguments excuse me a master class on arguments it's a survival master class uh one of the uh, books before writing winning that love uh, i wrote a pamphlet called i don't want to argue let's make love which provided insight on how couples uh married couples uh couples that were dating uh should navigate arguments in their relationship and overcome them uh, in that way, overcome the resentment afterwards uh, and so forth and so on. So we're going to host uh, a survival masterclass July 25th. Uh, and if you're interested, please make sure that you register for that Zoom class. Uh, I can't give too much away, but I, you know, God has given me some really some divine nuggets to give you guys. So I'm excited about that. Awesome. Awesome. So if they're watching this before July 25th of 2023, they'll be able to join you live. And then after that, they'll still be able to sign up and they'll get, they'll get the replay with all that Absolutely. valuable information. And I, I think we've already covered this, but who is going to be helped the most by your strategy for winning at love? 
I would say uh, women who are trying to navigate traditional gender roles and beliefs, uh, women who want to succeed and, and, and cultivate and maintain uh, relationships, women who want deeper connections with their partner as well as with God, uh, women who want to who, who are looking for strategies to build confidence to navigate uh, the dating the dating world, uh, single women, women that have been traumatized and want to avoid uh, falling in or succumbing to uh, relationships uh, that are abusive, uh, women who want to grow, who want to who want to grow spiritually, who want to grow personally. I was going to uh, say it's almost a personal growth journey more than a. I mean, it is a dating book. It is about winning at love, but it's also a personal growth journey. Yes, it is. Uh, and it's also a spiritual growth journey too, because it's a, it allows you to transform. Uh, you know, it promotes, the book promotes positive change as well as, and I say spiritual growth is because you're deepening your relationship with God. You know, the book consists of scriptures, divine truths uh, about relationships in terms of helping women navigate uh, the negatives. Uh, in addition to that, it, it promotes, uh, you know, uh, a, a segue into Christian believers, that says believers becoming more Christ-like in our approach, our relationship approaches with men. That's wonderful. And I think that just simple things like forgiving you, you talk about that and letting God be the healer. It's so, Absolutely. It's so foundational. You know, uh, forgiving and, 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 you know, the book talks about helping women get past old hurts. And let me just take a moment, Donna, to talk about hurts. You know, hurts is something that causes us suffering or some form of pain. And a lot of people tend to, Donna, say that hurt people hurt people. Yeah. No, Donna, it's people's decisions, their selfish decisions, their negative decisions that hurt people. So this book definitely promotes forgiveness. Forgiveness means what? To release people from judgment, you know, and you need that in order to move forward, to heal, to properly heal, you know. So what happens is that when people hold on to hurts, they're holding on to people's negative decisions to impact people's lives. So in a nutshell, hurt is a form of limited belief. Somebody imposed a limited belief in terms of who they thought you would be, what they thought you would accept, you know, and the only way to deal with that is to give it to God, give it all the way to God. A lot of people say, oh yeah, I gave it to God, but then they're still angry. I meet with people years later. I remember, yeah, I remember you had that argument with X, Y, Z. Yeah, I'm still mad at her. I still don't talk to her. No, that's not what God wants. God wants us to heal properly. He wants to get in front of it. So it's first, we have to give it to God. God, please take away the pain, not the love. Lord, take away the pain. Because again, I don't know, maybe somewhere down the line, Lord, you may need me to pray for this person, to, to intercede on this person's behalf. So again, you know, you have to forgive. And I know sometimes it's difficult because it's disappointing, you know, when people hurt you, when people offend you, God says, you know, we take it personally. But when people offend us, it's, they're really, what they're really is uh, an offense. Let me just say an offense is an illegitimate spirit of judgment against God for favor in our lives. So it's an attack against God for what he's giving us, what he plans on giving us even afterwards. So we just have to be careful. And I believe that when you give it to God, that allows God to move on your behalf. We know anybody that hurts people, they have to deal with God. Anything that we do on this earth, we have to, you know, we have to pay for it before we leave this earth. I mean, and God doesn't punish us. Like, you know, some people have this view of God where he's going to, you know, strike forth lightning. God allows our sin to punish us, Donna. Oh, that's he good. He allows our sin to punish us. That's so really good. Absolutely. So I'm just saying that you're absolutely right. We have to implement forgiveness in our relationship. That has to be a vital part. Nobody's perfect. You know, some people don't know what to do. Some people panic. Not that they do it intentionally, but some people panic. You know, you have men that have hurt women that didn't know how to be men because their fathers failed them in certain aspects, didn't take to teach them how to take care of women or, or how to treat somebody that you're dating or that you say that you love because it wasn't in the household. 
he wasn't initially in a household. So they didn't see it. They didn't have role models, you know. Uh, so we have to implement forgiveness, absolutely, in order for women to move forward, get past old hurts, leave that alone. It's just limited belief. And by you holding on to things, again, you're making yourself an accessory to somebody's offense or rather an accessory to somebody's sin. Let it go. Give it to God. Forgive them. And you watch what God do. You watch what God do to your life. He's going to bring somebody else in. He's waiting now. But a lot of times when we don't forgive, we get in our own way. God's saying, get out the way. I want to bless you. You know what, the, what my promises say. You know what my promises can do. You know I'm, everything is possible with Christ. You know that. So let it go. Give it to me. I yeah, know, I that's it. The, I, so I want to pick up on a couple of things you said. Um, one that I don't think the church talks nearly enough about. Your sin, your sin will punish you. You know, I remember reading in Chuck's, one of the first Christian books I ever read um, was by Chuck Swindoll. And he said that your sin has consequences, forgiveness notwithstanding. God forgives your sin, but your sin still has consequences. And sometimes we can say, well, God's punishing me. No, you're just reaping the consequences. And, you know, you look at the life of David and so many others in scripture. Um, there was so much sexual sin in David's family and God loved David. He's a man after God's own heart. But those sexual sins, they had they had really dire consequences. And our, our sexual sin has really serious consequences, really Absolutely. damaging consequences for us Absolutely. and the people around us. And the church doesn't say nearly enough about it. It says, God, don't worry, you know, God forgives you. And of course he does, but there are real consequences. And I, I don't know, this might be too deep, but I just, I wonder how much of this is sexual brokenness that women are, are sleeping around and they're not married and they're having sex outside of marriage. And I'm, I guess I'm old fashioned. I think that does a lot of damage to a woman's soul, to her mind, will, and emotion. Absolutely. What's your experience Absolutely. with that? Absolutely. Uh, well, just to talk about uh, reaping, you know, God talks about sowing and reaping. Yeah. Uh, basically, sowing is daily living, how we live. Yeah. So absolutely, there's consequences for our sins. Absolutely. Uh, when it comes to what a lot of people are doing, women sleeping around, they have no idea. You know, God talks about how, you know, you lay down. He talks about a scripture and whatnot. You lay down. I don't have the reference in front of me, but you lay down, you know, with somebody and then you get up because you take on that person's spirits spirits yeah. transfer you know so and when people talk about soul ties you know yeah. that's why god implements marriage because it's it's a situation where you know you can explore with your husband you can explore with your wife you know and, and god considers our body sacred so to just give yourself away like that it says something to the man as well like it says something to the woman you know, and I talk about that because it doesn't make him feel like he's any different. It makes it seem like he's the same man that you do this with every, with all the men, you know, and it's just, it's just not good. It's not beneficial, uh, you know, and this is something else that I speak about in the book as well. Uh, and that's where the heal, the need to heal comes in. You need to heal absolutely. those consequences. We, we don't so, want to be like, oh, well, this is like hopeless and depressing. No. There are consequences, well, you, well, but you, then there's healing. And I think that coming back to what we said a few minutes ago, that's why you can't run to the next relationship. You've got, there's there's damage there and you need to take a minute, heal. And I know you walk them through that. You know, you help women go through that journey, make sure they take time, like you're saying, to reflect, to heal, to let God deal with the damage that you've done absolutely and not doing it god's way and because if right. you don't and stop and evaluate and reflect and heal and do that you just right into the next do you want to i did if you want to say something about that you can but i know no, you also I just want to share about your journey to, too right no i know we're both excited but uh you have women that believe that if they give themselves to a man sexually that will make the man stay it's like some women believe that, you know, 
having a man, you know, getting pregnant by a man will make a man stay. Like you have other unhealthy mentalities because that's an health unhealthy mentality that to believe that by you giving somebody something that that will make him stay that doesn't happen you know people stay in committed relationships people stay committed and respectful and honorable to relationships because they want to they see the value of that individual they don't now, do you see this in the church are you no, I'm, I'm no, I'm just saying in oh, okay, general, I, I, mean, I mean, most, I mean, most all, of the people listening are Christians. Are I would least, hope that Christians would, be good. but you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm old, I'm in my sixties, so maybe things have changed, but one would hope that a, a Christian would not intentionally be behaving that way, but you know, no one is perfect. Everybody has their, their stuff that they're dealing with, but um, it should be fairly obvious that if you're not married, you should not be Fornicating. You should be, be having Absolutely. sex with anyone. No, <laughs> Whether you, you want to keep the man, because... lose the man, whatever you do, you should not be. I mean, the Bible is so clear on this and it's so damaging. And I think that's what the 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 church and and it probably actually I, I don't have the statistics and I don't know if you do, but I, I think it's probably true that the 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 difference between the sexual promiscuity in the church. Uh, sex outside of marriage for those who you know attend church love jesus is probably not that different from the world do you do you have any stats or insight on that i don't believe that it's any different you know i think you're probably flesh, right i think yeah, I'm it's old. all flesh driven i think i just you think kim i think i just dated myself i think i just really <laughs> dated no, it's myself and driven. showed how irrelevant i am i shouldn't be conducting this interview I, no. as I was thinking about it i was like donna you're living 40 years ago today these people today, I think there's probably no difference. Yeah, I mean, I, it's it's all flesh driven, you know, and that's okay. why again you have to and, lie, allow God to govern your life. Just shock the old flesh. lady. You just shock the old lady over here. No, it's it's, but it's it's okay. But it's, it's try. Okay you know what I love? Like, you know what, Kim? I think you're just being real, and I love it. I think you're just being real. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's 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 flesh driven. Yeah. You know, you have. You have people that can't wait. You, listen, Lord, I can't wait for you to bring me a man. I mean, it's, it's, it just happens. But yes, my thing is. is this. We know fornication is a sin. We know that. We know adultery is a sin. I'm not saying that that stops people, but if you are a believer, it should give you pause. You know, people lay down with people and get up and they have STDs. Like, who are you sleeping with? Some people sleep with serial killers. You don't know this person's mind, you know, and that's why God wants us to wait. He wants us to abstain. He wants to send us the right person, the purpose, the person that he's purpose for our lives. But some men, like some women, cannot wait. Their, their pants are burning. They have to automatically do what they Jimmy, need to you're do. really and keeping it real. I mean, I'm a little I, I just, shocked. I'm absolutely. It's shocked, all you're flesh keeping driven. it real. I mean, it's all and I think your book driven. really keeps it real too. I, in the best of all possible worlds, people would read the Bible and do what it says, which means we wouldn't gossip. Absolutely. We wouldn't get not. angry. We wouldn't do any of the things that the Bible says we're not supposed to do that. We all have our own form of sin. I do think that, I mean, the scripture does say that sexual sin is uniquely damaging because we're Absolutely. sinning against our own body. But anyway, right. we, well, I took you on a tangent. <laughs> no, it's okay. I it's all, okay. But I, I took you I, off I, on a tangent. Let's get back no. to relevant okay. to your audience. I got you. I got you. <laughs> you, want, you want to share a little bit about your journey? Oh, Okay. Um, what led you to this? Yes. Well, first of all, uh, I'm a believer in, in equality, women's equality, equal partnerships. And uh, I believe as somebody who's experienced gender discrimination, as well as uh, traditional uh, gender, I've been impacted by traditional gender roles in my courtships with men, uh, as well as my male friendships along with interests that I pursued. Uh, I've delved into the music as a lyricist. I've del delved into dancing. I used to be a big time hip hop dancer. And uh, I've been exposed to a lot of traditional gender roles uh, and beliefs by men who accepted this. And, uh, and they've all ended disappointing because I've challenged them. I rejected them. You know, you cannot impose your expectations of what you believe a woman looks like should look like, should act like, 
should feel. Uh, so I think that in a nutshell, and I think the biggest, the greatest impact for me was when I was working, I was on a job for 27 years, uh, had the skill set, again, had the experience, the education, and uh, I was passed over several times uh, for job promotions. And they were all given to men because uh, the authority that was in charge didn't believe that a woman could lead, although I had demonstrated this for years. So that was very impactful for me. And I wanted to expose just, just being somebody who promotes equality. equality uh, I wanted to expose traditional gender roles and help other women that may end up in my situation or are in, as we speak now, uh, help them navigate the challenges of traditional gender roles, whether it be in person relationships or in the workspace. Uh, in addition to that, I wanted to encourage women to reevaluate their expectations, their relationship expectations, uh, so they could improve uh, their relationships as well as empower them to make real changes. Uh, and additionally, uh, you know, not all men, there's not all men that follow traditional gender roles and beliefs. So I wanted to highlight those men because there's a distinction. There is a distinction. There are men that believe in empathy, that believe in compassion, that believe in kindness. So I wanted to highlight that and give men a voice so they can vocalize their positive views of women, you know, because a lot of women are broken. A lot of women have been abused. A lot of women uh, are, are not here due to domestic violence uh, by the hand of men who are misogynistic. They, they target women, you know, they have a sense of entitlement that, you know, they're superior to women and therefore they can mistreat women in any way. So I would say that uh, this, the impact from my experience, the experiences of other women, uh, as well as me, you know, wanting to stand firm and support women in general, as well as support men who promote gender equality, you know, uh, it was important for me uh, to put this book together. Uh, something else I wanted to say, yeah. but. So again, as we said from the beginning, it, the book is, and I think it's important that you, you know, say that the book is not for everyone. If, if you are a woman who wants to be in a very traditional relationship where, you know, the man is primarily the, the breadwinner and, you know, he has a successful career and you're able to, you know, prioritize being at home, having the children. If that's what you want, this is yeah. not the book for you. Um, this is a book, especially for those women who are, they've really prioritized their professional life, their career life, they've got degrees, maybe they have advanced degrees, they've been successful in the marketplace and in business, and um, they're having trouble finding men who are comfortable with that. And probably most men are not comfortable with a woman who makes more money than them. But you can find a man. And I, I think what you're saying is just be aware, the awareness that you're going to have a really hard time making it work. You cannot look for a traditional man and expect that this relationship is going to work when you are not a traditional woman. Is, isn't, isn't that just part of accepting this is who I am? This is who I'm not. And I need to find a man, believe that God, you know, with 8 billion people on the planet, that God can find a man who is cool, who's chill, with a strong-minded, career-oriented woman. I mean, is that, that's who you're talking to, right? Absolutely. And you do have men that they, they are pursuing that. They want women. They're, they're hard. I would think it'd be a lot harder to find. No, it's just with women, you know, there are you know, speaking to this book speaks to the woman that's broken, that's tired, you know, that's been in, uh, you know, negative relationship after the next, you know, it wants a positive relationship, but based on these negative experiences and the lies of the enemy, don't believe that they exist or they can't exist or God has them in mind for them. God couldn't you come know? up with one. Like God, there's, there's a line in, um, little women. And okay. the girl has, you know, she's a proposal didn't work out for her. And, 
she's really, you know, sad and she's not going to get the, you know, the guy that you know, didn't work out. And the little girl says, you only need one if he's the right one. <laughs> I want to share, I like forgot that. to share this. I like that. You only need one if it's the right one. And I think that's part of coming back to what we said, trusting God. Let me share this. Absolutely. Winning at love, how to let go of old hurts and misunderstandings about men so that you can finally have the relationship God intended for all you. Here. That's what it's all about. And I think that this is a, a topic that, the church doesn't talk about a lot of the things that you're talking about. The church doesn't want to talk about. It's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to accept, first of all, that there are women who feel that the traditional role is, is not for them. It's uncomfortable to talk about the fact that most men aren't comfortable with that woman, but that God is big enough. And his promises to you are just as valid as they are to the woman who wants the traditional role. Absolutely. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, again, it's, it's people's views, you know. Uh, a lot of views have been twisted by the media. You know, uh, you have the gender segregation, you have gender degradation. Uh, so again, the media has twisted a lot of views. Uh, and I know that some traditionalists have yet to accept, and I know you speak about the church, but it's real. I mean, it's real. And uh, the goal is to, again, I'm passionate about relationships. The goal is to bring men and women together. You know, uh, God created us for a reason, you know, to communicate, to work together, to bond, to be in positive, healthy relationships. And that's where I'm trying to get us to. And so that's possible. You've seen that with the women that you've coached. They've been able to. Absol find Absolutely. Donna, okay. I've, I've. Give us some hope. Yes, there is hope. There is hope. There is hope. You know, and there's prayer. It's centered around prayer. You know, you have to prioritize God. Uh, you have to self-prioritize. Uh, and, and, you know, sometimes you have to walk away and say, God, OK, I want to start over. There's nothing wrong with starting over. If you're in a relationship with someone and it doesn't doesn't work out, it's OK. Lord, what's next? Who's next? You know, and you have, like you said, that time period to self-reflect. You know, this is what I don't want. And I need to communicate this. I will end this relationship. Now I'm going to draw healthy boundaries. Giving yourself permission to want what you want and need what you need. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's you a big part win. of what your book does. It yes. gives women permission to say, you know what? This is who I am and this is what I need. And I, I need to say that. I need to articulate that. Right. And, and be okay it, with it. Yes. And and believe. And also, uh, this book promotes belief that there are men who will say, you know, thank God for you. Oh, I'm glad you're in my life you know, that love you, that don't succumb to the pressures, uh, the gender expectations of yeah. men. Because, you know, you have a couple I knew when I was in, in college, it's complicated and it doesn't matter. But the the wife ha had been born in China, lived through the cultural revolution. Her family lost everything. Wow. Her uncle was the ambassador from China to Peru. So the family fled to Peru when she was a little girl rebuilt their lives starting from nothing there was a military junta in peru they fled for their lives again lost wow. everything again ended up living in harlem oh wow okay and rebuilt her life she went to the same college i went to she was much older than me but she went to the same college that i went to became i mean first of all gorgeous beautiful worked for, you know, the, the fashion industry, became enormously successful, working in Manhattan, probably the most driven woman I've ever known, but beautiful, so elegant, so lovely. And she found a man whose parents lived through their own revolution in Iran. And so she found a match 
she found a man who was more say his first job was with Pfizer before they developed the, you know, the drug that made them famous. So he, she found a man who was even more successful. I, what I'm saying to you, I mean, this is a girl who fled to Harlem, had living through a revolution, who found a man in New York City whose parents had gone through a revolution and they matched. Amen. God and had they faith. both had the same level of drive and they both, you know, she was as non, I mean, she was very both. They eventually did have one child, um, but they were both very focused on their career and, you know, what they wanted to accomplish in the world. And I, I don't even know why I went there, but it just, it was, it just goes to, I mean, God can find the most unlikely, he can match you Absolutely. with someone who understands you, who gets you. It's like, a man doesn't have to go through the same stuff that you went through to get you, but he got her. I mean, he understood her. And I just, because they were madly in love, passionately in love. And uh, so I think just, we want to give women hope, whatever you've been through, if you've been through two revolutions and had to flee for your life tw twice, and then now you're, you're living in Harlem trying to rebuild your life again, God can still find someone who will be, you'll be like, there's no, how could God find this person for me? Absolutely. You, you just have to believe. Yeah, it's, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and that's what this book does. This book gives says, hope. yes, yes, absolutely. It definitely gives hope. It lets you know, it. you can, yeah, you can achieve a successful and healthy, positive relationship. No matter you know, what you've been Absolutely. Well, maybe we're everything that women are like, well, I and you're deserving that revolution. And deserving. I've definitely had my own revolutions around the same dumb mountain. I've made, I made many revolutions around the same dumb relationship, the same dumb mountain. You know what? There's hope for everybody. If and I, and I will say this: that if you truly desire to be in a relationship, I believe that's from God because God can take that away. He can take away that that desire. And I would just ch encourage the women who are listening to this right now. And, you know, you feel like you've been around the mountain. <laughs> is, this, is there really someone who would match me? Just say, God, if you do not desire for me to be married, if, if, if winning in the love isn't in the cards for me, then I want you to take this desire from me. Take it away from me. Set me free to sanctify my singleness to you. And I will give the rest of my life to your service and I will stop the mayhem and the nonsense. But God, as it stands right now, I truly believe that I desire that companionship, that relationship, and I am going to believe I'm going to have faith that since you haven't taken the desire away, that it's a, a holy desire, every bit is sacred from you. And I believe that you're going to find somebody, even if you have to go to the other side of the world, you're going Absolutely. to find someone who's a perfect fit for me. It's just keeping the faith. You have to keep that yeah. faith. You have to believe that it's done. You know, what is prayer? Prayer positions us, Donna, to receive the will of God, you know, and yeah. you keep going, you keep moving forward. You, you're going to, but don't be afraid. Don't fear. Don't believe because you've been through this horrific time. You know, you've been through relationships that were abusive, that you know, that inflicted, you know, you walked away with inflicted trauma, you know, God says, listen, heal, find your rest in me, give it to me. I'll take that all away. And, you know, and I'll bless you because I have purposed someone for you. You know, it's just a matter of time. You know, people say, well, God is, you know, he takes so long. No, you're not ready. He's preparing Amen. you. You have you're to be ready. ready for the responsibility of the blessing. People say, well, you know, I've been waiting five years. Well, you're not ready for the responsibility of the blessing. You have to get ready. God is getting you ready because, you know, you don't know your impact on that man's life that you're yeah. going to have. And by you going through this, wherever God's taking you for, he's taking you through dry land. He's, he's taking you saying, well, so many things are happening. I'm feeling so overwhelmed. There's a reason for that. Yeah, it could be attacks because a lot of people are under attack. I understand that. You stand firm in your faith as the believer and you say, Lord, bless me with a companion. Please help bless me with a companion that I can spend the rest of my days with. It's going to it's going to take work. Even when he arrives, it's still going to take work, especially if he brings baggage, in, baggage into the relationship and you bring baggage into the relationship. You have to leave that baggage alone. So it's still going to be a process. But God is able. And that's where it starts. And it starts with our faith. Faith means what? Surrendered belief. 
But you know, a lot of a lot of people believe, oh, it's not going to happen. Belief is making a decision to know no matter what. It is what it is. That's why belief is so strong. It's so strong. And that's why we need to, you know, what is trauma? Donna, trauma is failed belief. And that's why God says that you have to have a belief system that's based on my word. Amen. That's based on my principle because that will never fail. The flesh will fail, but God will never fail us. So yeah, I and that's what that. I love. Uh uh, I love about your book is that it, it's totally biblical and, and faith-based. Well, I want to thank you for joining me today. And I want to thank everybody who's been here again. My guest has been uh, Kim Champion, the author of Winning at Love, How to Let Go of Old Hurts Amen. and Misunderstandings About Men so that you can finally have the relationship God intended for you. And again, if you're joining us live, you can go to winningatlove.online and get a free copy, the free Kindle download all this week. Um, and also on that same website, winningatlove.online, you'll get the information about the live event that Kim is doing on July 25th on how to, how to argue uh, well. Um, and if it's after that date, you'll still be able to get the replay of that event. So thank you, everybody for joining us. Thank you, Kim. And I pray that this was a blessing and we want to yes. leave you with hope that God designed you. He gave you the desires of your heart. And if one of those desires is for a meaningful and beautiful relationship, then believe that God has it for you. Thanks so much. And God bless. Amen. Thanks, Donna. God bless you.